Hey honey bunches, it's Phoebe. I've made a video with an entree made in dessert which I'm calling a my death row dinner because they are flippin' fab recipes and I would happily eat them if it was my last meal on earth. So let's get into it. The entree is a vegan Turkish pizza, also known as la makan, um, usually made with like lamb mints um, and spices and tomato and eggplant. I adapted, um, got inspired by Gaz Oakley making it and sort of adapted it to make it a bit simpler. Um, but still full of flavour and super delish. So you want to start by sautéing some uh, onion and capsicum and garlic and then you want to add vegan mints. I use the Gardein. Then you want to add some spices like smoked paprika, cumin, um, cinnamon, allspice, add parsley, give that a stir, toast up the spices, then add tomato paste and tomatoes and a bit of coconut sugar. Um, let the tomatoes cook down a bit and then add some vegetable stock. I'm sorry that my camera's going in and out of focus. It was having an interesting day or if you <laughs> watch when it goes um, blurry, it could be not happy with the product placement. I don't know. Anyway, so add some pepper. I didn't add salt because tomato is quite a salty vegetable. Then I used like a supermarket gluten-free uh, pizza base, but you can do you. Use whatever you like, gluten-free or not. Um, traditionally, there's quite a thin amount of it spread on the base, um, and this makes two pizza bases if you spread it thinly, but if you want to go as thick as a fiddle, then probably one pizza base is what it'll do. Um, and you could make like a minty cucumber yogurt. I tried that, but actually I liked it more with tahini and parsley on top, because um, it sort of makes like a cheesy thing. Woohoo! Then the second recipe, which I'm calling the main, is Swedish lentil meatballs. I do have a recipe for um, Swedish meatballs in my second cookbook. It's made out of like tempeh's base, but I've been playing around with this method, and I really prefer it. It's bang on. I'm going to make it all the time because it's so delicious. Um, saute some onion and garlic. Add that mixture to a food processor along with cooked green lentils. Some nutritional yeast, some vegan parmesan, some dried thyme, some fresh parsley. Just give it a hand and chopping it up before it blitzes it. Um, add some liquid sweetener. I use maple, um, Dijon mustard, um, and then tear up some bread. You could use like breadcrumbs, but actually, it, I think it actually kind of helps if you have bread chunks um, to start with, and then salt and pepper it, because the bread sort of helps it bind, and if little chunks are left, to sort of absorb the moisture, and yeah, I don't know, it just works. So pulse that until it's looking kind of like a uh, meatball texture. <laughs> Nice and mincy, but um, still a bit of texture, not all a paste. And then with like wet hands or oiled hands, roll them up into little balls and pop them on a plate or something because you want to chill them before you cook them um, just so they stay together better. The flavor can, flavors can get to know each other. Um, they'll just be a lot easier to cook and crisp up. Um, meanwhile, make your gravy by melting some vegan butter in a saucepan. Then when bubbly, add some apple puree, some tamari or soy sauce, some vegetable stock, some coconut milk, some plant-based milk, some red wine vinegar, nutmeg. Give it a stir. It'll look super liquidy. Um, but when it's sort of brung to, brought, what, um, tense, when it's like sort of bubbling, add a slurry, which is like a bit of cornflour mixed with water and that will thicken up just a little bit so it's a nice runny gravy consistency. And then when you're ready to cook them, um, grab a nice non-stick pan and pop in your balls. <laughs> uh, don't crowd them too much and don't touch them too much if you want them to have a nice crispy outer layer. There they are, looking glorious. They really crisp up super well. I mean, you don't have to be there painstakingly crisping up every side, but yeah, I served it with mashed potatoes, peas, um, cranberry jam and um the gravy and hello everyone i've made a chocolate ganache crepe cake this has been a dream of mine since like seeing the concept on pinterest years ago and this one's vegan and gluten free and refined sugar free and it's amazing so i'm really excited to share this one um so add some plant milk i just made the batter in a blender um along with some plain flour gluten free or not i use some buckwheat flour some corn flour vegetable oil i use grapeseed um liquid sweetener like maple syrup some apple cider vinegar, um, a bit of vanilla, and a bit of salt. Um, these can be gluten free or not, up to you. And if you just don't want to do this in a high power blender type situation, then put the uh, dry ingredients in a bowl and add the wet to the middle and whisk until smooth. I also added two ingredients uh, the lead, they were turmeric and black salt, which sort of add a yellowy egginess. <laughs> which would be in a usual crepe recipe. So to cook the crepes I use like a half a cup 
measurement just so I had the same amount in each crepe. Uh, ideally you would swivel the pan as soon as the batter hits the um, surface. I was a bit slow there but that was one of my first ones. Um, let the bubbles come up and then when there's not really any like raw batter on top you're good to flip. We got this new sauce uh, fry pan and it's heaven! The non-stick surface is glorious! <laughs> um, yeah, add some more vegan butter to the pan each time you do one. But there they are, stacking them up, letting them cool between paper towel, just absorb some of the oil and happy days! Um, and if you use a saucepan, I mean a fry pan that's kind of got lips at the side, you should be able to make them uniform in size, which helps because you're going to be stacking them. Um, melt some chocolate dark chocolate, um, add some soaked cashews, maple syrup, cocoa powder, um, melted coconut oil and the melted dark chocolate um, along with some coconut cream, a uh, pinch of salt to a high speed blender. This you do need to do in like a blender or food processor because even though the cashews are soaked and relatively soft they need to be blended like you mean it. Um, yes, yeah, so if you're not assembling this straight away just put that mixture the ganache in the fridge although if you do it overnight you might need to melt it and then let it cool again before you assemble because that's what I did that's what I found but all was fine doing that um then for the top I've just whipped up some coconut cr uh, yogurt Koyo the natural brand I saw that Coles is stocking this like a similar product for like half the price I'm yet to try that but if anyone has let me know how that went and then I added like a little couple of teaspoons of maple syrup just to get a little, little sweet twinge because it doesn't have any sweetener in it. otherwise that should be relatively fluffy again if you're not assembling this straight away put it in the fridge to chill and then glorious time of assemblage um every ingredient was cool or room temperature when I did this yeah it's pretty self-explanatory crepe ganache crepe ganache crepe ganache um I could have added a bit more than I was adding here because I had a tinsy bit left over but you live and you learn um and I topped it with the whipped coconut yogurt and topped with strawberries and grated chocolate and oh my goodness it was really straightforward like it's a pretty awesome statement dessert with relative um complications in uh, appearance wise to achieve that look ramble okay so yeah i just put all the me eating clips at the end because i thought maybe you want the recipes bing 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 um ready to go so yeah this is heaven. I mean, you could just have this as a main, but like, it could be an entree if you have a dinner party type thing coming up and you want to impress people with all the levels of eating. Um, <laughs> what am I even saying? Um, the Swedish meatballs, though, bloomin' heck. I mean, you do have to like cook lentils unless they sell green lentils where you are, but they're so good. I mean, I'm not the only one I know on the planet who loves a good Swedish meatball from IKEA or did um, when I wasn't vegan. Um, the veggie balls, well I've got food poisoning from them so I'm not really going near them. And then the crepe cake. Uh, anyway, but the Swedish meatballs are a great substitute, even better, um, than, I don't know, the lamb ones. And this crepe cake, bloomin' heck, it cuts super well, it tastes looking fantastic, and it's amazing. I'm gonna be making it so often, I was quite shocked, yeah, as you can see. So. They're the three recipes, honey bunches, of my death row dinner. I hope this finds you well and find the full recipes on my blog. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!